in darkest Dorset, below the northern scarp slope of the Dorset Downs, lies a straggling village called Batcombe, a curious village with one very curious tale. This story dates from the late 16th century, a period of time when religious unrest and superstition was a part of everyday life. This is the story of a man that sold his soul to the devil one cold winter's night. John stood before him, old Nick. The devil had answered him. The creature climbed out from the earth and stood upwards. He was tall dark and his eyes. His eyes were large and black and they glared menacingly at John Minton. Welcome to the seventh of our 13 terrifying stories for Halloween. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the legend of John Minton, the dark conjurer of Batcombe. This is a true story and makes up just one of the dark and twisted tales that exist in my family history. Yana and I would like to thank everyone for watching. Every time someone views our videos, you give us both encouragement to do what we love. Let us know how we are doing, drop us a comment, and for more upcoming episodes, please subscribe to the channel. From Yana and I, we hope you enjoy the story. This is the story about the Dark Conjurer of Batcombe. Or as he was known by the villagers of long ago, Conjuring Minton, due to his dealing with the devil and the use of black magic. A conjurer, or cunning man, was a wise man with the art of healing, the knowledge of foresight, or a necromancer whose powers came from the black arts. In real life, his name was John Minton Esquire of Batcombe. He was born to a well-respected Dorset family, whose connections included the royal courts of Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. He studied at Oxford, like most of his family, and was a wealthy man in his own right. John Minton was born in 1514 and died 1592, husband of Margaret Woley and brother-in-law to Sir John Woley, Queen Elizabeth I's Latin secretary and a member of her Privy Council. Conjuring Minton has surely left his mark on history and his legend has survived the ages. His small Square, modest sepulchre survives to this very day and is an eerie reminder to all that passes by. It is said that one day Conjuring Minton, a well accomplished horse rider, set out on his horse from the village towards Batcombe Hill. As he was riding, he suddenly remembered that he forgot to put his book of magic and alchemy away. His magical grimoire had been left wide open on his study desk for all to see. Conjuring Minton, afraid that someone might take to dabbling with his spell book, called upon the aid of the devil, who appeared forthwith. John stood before him, old Nick, the devil had answered him. The creature climbed out from the earth and stood upwards. He was tall, dark, and his eyes, his eyes were large and black, and they glared menacingly at John Minton. He had answered his call, and for what he asked, he signed a deal with John. In payment, John gave up his soul. 
and the devil granted him both speed and strength. Minton turned with great speed back to the village and with one kick of encouragement he made his horse take a gigantic leap from Backcomb Hill. The conjurer glided through the sky on his horse, away from the hill, over the trees, across the village and then suddenly as he descended one of the horse's fiery hooves clipped one of the four church pinnacles causing it to break away and tumble to the ground. The conjurer landed safely in a nearby field close to the church known as Pitching Plot, where it is said the imprint of his horse's hooves may still be seen on the ground, remains forever barren of grass. The pinnacle, his horse's hoof dislodged from the church tower, lay where it had fallen for many years after the event. It was believed that bad luck would befall the village if it were ever replaced. In 1906 it was restored and to this day the restored pinnacle can be seen crooked and anyone who knows this town always looks up. Whether bad luck fell upon the village we shall never know. The conjurer continued to amaze the villagers for several years after this event. When Conjuring Minton died, he left strict instructions that his body should be buried, neither in the church nor out of it. So as instructed, he was placed beneath a modest square sepulchre built into the wall of the family chapel, Minton Chapel with his feet and probably most of his legs tucked firmly beneath the chapel's masonry walls and the remainder of his body in the churchyard. Sadly, the chapel was demolished during church restoration in 1864 and since then Conjuring Minton has lain entirely outside the church. His ivy-clad tomb makes a curious spectacle near the porch. His name, however, lives on as a byword for wickedness and devilry. The Dorset poet and writer Thomas Hardy made reference to Conjuring Minton, though spelt Conjuring Minton at the beginning of chapter 21 of his novel Tess.